Welcome to the Hyper Fast Show, where we believe unlimited growth in business and life is created by surrounding yourself with people who have been where you are going. Learning from others allows you to compress time and grow hyper fast. And now, here are your hosts, Kerry Shaw and Dan Lesniak. Kerry and Dan are real estate developers, best selling authors, billion dollar agents, and million dollar agent makers. And now, get ready to grow hyper fast. Hi, I'm Carrie Scholl with Hyper Fast Agent, and I'm so excited to have Noelle with us today. And I just want to learn your story. You have, I've heard about your background, and I think it's pretty <laughs> unique for real estate agents. So tell us a little bit about your path into real estate. Yeah, so I actually went to law school and practiced real estate law for about a year and a half and decided that was not for me. I did not love sitting at a desk drafting documents all day, which is mostly what attorneys do, believe it or not. So during law school, I started a wedding photography business as a creative outlet during law school because my brain needed that side of things. And at the time that I was practicing law, my photography business was actually more successful than my job at the law firm as an associate. I was making more money from the photography. So I left, went to go do my own business. And then about seven or eight years into that, I decided I was tired of wedding dresses and slaving away every Saturday. And brides. And brides. (laughs) I had made it to this point where I was at what I thought was kind of the pinnacle of my career. I was making a ton of money as a wedding photographer. And in fact, at one of my last weddings, I made like 12 grand. Wow. As a photographer. It was good money, but I just realized it wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. So I went and got my real estate license and really haven't looked back. Everything kind of works together for it. So, first of all, I want to applaud you for deciding to leave after going through law school, making a choice to get out of that field must have been really hard. It was one of the hardest decisions I've ever made to it. You know, it was a change in a career path in in our state. We had four law schools at the time and I graduated from law school in the worst year in history of our state to get a job. So the fact that I actually walked away from that job was really kind of crazy. Everybody was looking at me like I was Thinking you were nuts. Yeah. Probably your family thought you were crazy, right? They did a little bit, but they also knew how passionate I was about being a creator. Yep. So. So how did you make the final decision and, and decide, knowing, okay, I'm unhappy. There's a lot of people who are listening to this who may be unhappy in their life right now. What was it that gave you the strength to just jump? Well, having support on the other side of it was probably the biggest thing. I had a spouse who was really supportive of the decision and knowing that I could make it work. So I was actually moonlighting basically every night after I'd leave my legal job. I'd go home and edit and sometimes I'd pull all-nighters and I would try to get in the next day and I was working two jobs. So having that second income already coming in didn't hurt the decision either. It made it easier to decide that. Well, and there are some people out there who are probably part-time real estate agents and they're telling themselves that they can't do Mm -hmm. this. They can't Mm -hmm. make the change. And the reality is take advice from Noelle. You just need to increase your hustle. Oh, and I can speak to part-time real estate. So while I was getting my real estate license, I was still doing photography full time. I actually, it took me two years to transition out of doing the photography and to learn the power of saying no. <laughs> that was the worst. That was the hardest thing for me to do. But once I shut that other business down and fully focused on real estate, I tripled my income that year. So it's, it's doable. And you just knew clearly that what, what about real estate was the draw for you? Well, for me, it was the dynamic combination of doing all of the legal work that, you know, we're not attorneys as realtors, but we do a lot of things that involve reading documents, signing documents, negotiating, and then combining that with all of the marketing and video and photography and whatnot. It just worked out for what I wanted to do. All of the elements Mm -hmm. of your desires. 
Yep. Amazing. So you get in the business. It's a two-year transition. Mm-hmm. And then from the, the first year that you started, tell mm-hmm. us how that year went. For full-time? Mm-hmm. So well, uh, you no, don't even... No, no, no. Let's start with your first part-time year. Okay. So my very first part-time year... I only did eight deals, and they were deals that just fell into my lap from friends, family, and former clients. Okay. And then it sort of stayed that way. I maybe doubled it for the next year. And then after that, once I actually went full time, it tripled itself. And then I started growing a team. I've only been doing this, I've only been licensed for four years. So Actually. you've only been full time for two, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and now you took the leap and opened your own brokerage. I did. Yep. Wow. Okay. So tell us about that. Your your second full year. Yeah. No. Third yeah. full year. You tripled your business. Yep. And then you said, you know what? I'm going to open my own brokerage. So what led sort to of. that choice? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have been, part of it actually was the influence of lab co agents and seeing that there are other possibilities to be able to go outside of the big name brokerage and getting connected with people and seeing how things can be done a little differently. And with all of the marketing that I was doing already for myself, I wanted to be able to do it as a broker for other agents and help other agents succeed with that. So you took this leap, you had this vision of what kind of value you could create. Mm -hmm. And I heard you say earlier that you had so much value and people trusted you so much that you had quite a following when you opened your own brokerage. Yeah, I had an instant brokerage. So how many people are in your brokerage today? We've been open for three months and we are up to 12 agents right now. So, and we've got a couple teams that are exploring options and I've been recruiting, you know, that's part of the job, but I'm still in production and I'm still running a team too. So it's a transition. It's very cool. Massive growth. So what would be one piece of advice to agents out there that are trying to find their path and their calling? Find that support system. Find a niche. You know, today we talked a lot about teams, and I highly, highly recommend if you're an individual agent and you're not actually um, sure what you want to be doing and you're not producing, find a team that has a culture that you can fit in with and a brokerage that you can fit in with. Amazing advice. Thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests and improve our shows. So give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next time.